I remodeled my tub surround without having to remove any of my old existing cultured marble. I wanted to recreate a beautiful and unique slab of natural stone to put above my tub. My wife and I were ready for a new look in our bathroom, but wanted to do the project on a budget. We absolutely love the results. The blues and the earth tones tied everything together and we couldn't be more happy with how it looks and how much it cost. Because I did this project myself, it was under $300 in materials and only took me three days to complete the entire project. Guys, learn exactly how I did it. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. You got this. I'm on site to template the tools of the trade. Sheetrock knife, score, snap, this stuff cuts. Mega easy, it glues together a couple ways. You could use acetone, that chemically bonds this together, it doesn't pop or you could use hot glue. That's what I'm gonna use today. So let's go. I'm gonna tape these directly to my tub surround. I'll hot glue them together. I'll make some notes with my Sharpie. We'll take those templates back to the shop and start to fabricate my waterproof wall panels. We're going with a brown marble with a touch of blue earth. It's gonna look super good, guys. Here we go. The next step, I'm gonna apply my templates to the foam, mark them out, and then I'll, I'll do square cuts like this. I'm just gonna rip my piece of foam right on the table saw. But these more complicated little dog ear legs and stuff like that, I'll get out the jigsaw. You can even use a utility knife. This stuff is very, very easy to work with. The next step is a layer of fiberglass reinforcement. We're gonna apply that with our normal stone coat epoxy. Today's steps will not take you too much time, especially working with these tub walls. So if this was an epoxy shower, it's the same idea, just the panel is much bigger. Let's go. The current tub surround is about 3 8 of an inch thick. I'm gonna rip some strips of MDF at one and 3 8 That's gonna give me that drop edge so you never know that there's waterproof panels living behind my waterproof panels I'm creating. <laughs> I wouldn't normally have a drop edge. This is a new technique here we're doing, but I'm covering my little panel. So it's like almost like a little mini countertop. Before we would do this, we would tape that, flip it over, open it up, put epoxy in there, and then do the fiberglass. But since this is a drop edge, I'm gonna hot glue, push it tight. Just so this is only a temporary hold for me to then flip it over on some foam strips that raise it up off the deck to put the epoxy on from the top down. It'll work perfectly. You guys might have just witnessed um, my brain calculate how I was going to do this right then and there. <laughs> like, mm -hmm, computing, computing, too much random access memory filled up by music lyrics. Please clear the cache, Mitch. I can't, I can't clear the cache, but I could sing you like uh, the hits from the 1960s. My dad raised me working with him, listening to the golden oldies which is legendary. I miss those, but they're stuck in there, bro. They take up too much space. Listen to the rhythm of the falling rain. Telling me just what a fool I've been. I got a song for the rain stuck in there coming out. But can I remember what I just measured? No. So when we get to the job to install this, my tub surround comes all the way out to the edge of the wall. So I don't have any room for my drop edge. So I'm gonna take a, a diamond wheel on the grinder and cut back like an inch of the tub surrounds. So that's the only thing I have to remove because they glue those tub surrounds on to permanently live there. I've ripped some out before and the sheetrock comes right with it. And now I'm gonna have to completely waterproof the whole tub surround again. So I'm avoiding that step. Those panels are already waterproof. They're just hideous and terrible to look at. Uh, and they're starting to yellow and look nasty. So. We're putting new waterproof panels to cover them, bring them up to date, look super sweet. Um, so we're making kind of waterproof mini, mini little countertops. The wood I'm using is on the outside. 
the water's down here. This is at the top of my panel, and this is at the front of my panel. So here's the top of my bathtub. They're not gonna see any water. We're gonna waterproof the heck out of them as well and encapsulate them in epoxy. They're gonna be good to go. But uh, the main surface that's taking that water impact from the kids going psycho in the bathtub will be foam. It'll be impervious to water, covered in epoxy. Let's do this. I'm gonna rip these down so I can glue these all on at the same time. <laughs> Don't show that, Luke. Cool, we're good. All right, I'm gonna clock these out. All this is doing, guys, is just sealing this up. Any sharp 90 where epoxy flows, you wanna round it over. This is an eighth inch round over bit. So I'm gonna round over this front leading edge so that epoxy flows nice and evenly. I'll do it there and on both those uh, wood pieces there. You can do tons of shower panels with this fiberglass mesh. It's available on our website, stonecoatcountertops.com, and it has a sticky side, which makes it kind of helpful to put on before you mix the epoxy. It's gonna kind of iron this on. Okay, knife, pocket. I'm also taking time to keep and not push these wrinkles down. I'll lift up my foam and I'll lift up the mesh and then just iron it down so it lays nice and flat. Take your time when doing this. It's time well spent. Okay, let's mix up some epoxy. All right, I'm mixing up some art coat. few ounces and then start spreading that with the Bondo spreader. I'm not going to use my notch trowel for this. Number one, I'm going to go thin. I don't need to go that thick. That's hail, bro. That has to be hail. Yeah. Yep. What in the hell is going on out here? Ow, right in the forehead, bro. Right between the eyes. Oh. Sniper. God just sniped me. <laughs> that piece looks good. All right, this is done, guys. I'm gonna let this chill, let it cure overnight. I'll be back tomorrow to lightly sand and continue on with the next step. We're doing the color coat. I'll be back tomorrow. All right, our fiberglass mesh coat is complete. It's dried, it's cured, it's looking great. I'm gonna remove the drips from the bottom so my tape dam adheres really well. And then we're ready for the next step, which is pouring out an exotic pour, light brown and blue marble. Let's go. Wherever the drips are on the foam, I'm just gonna come back with my knife here.
One toke over the line, sweet baby. One toke over the line. I'm gonna measure up and mix four to five ounces per square foot of our stone coat countertop epoxy. Now that my epoxy is mixed, I'm gonna divide it up into mixing cups. And then I'll tint those mixing cups separately. I'm gonna go white, pearl, white dye, brown dye, and blue earth. Five simple additives in this marble recipe. The exotic pour epoxy technique gives you the most realistic, natural looking marble, in my opinion, that first time epoxy users can do or epoxy pros. This is an awesome method to make those countertops, tabletops, shower wall panels, whatever you're making, look like mother nature had her hand in helping create those panels. I'm gonna do a stack stone. So I'm gonna pour left to right on all the pieces. Um, let's go, here we go. So after you get your exotic pour bucket made up, the next part, quite easy. We're just gonna pour this out right onto our project. about Willis. Removing that air as this continues to self level and meld out. Well, pretty good, right? Woo, these are looking good. I'm pumped about it. All right, I'm gonna let these cure for the next two and a half to three hours, and then I'm gonna address this tape dam. I'll peel that off and let the epoxy flow over my edges. These waterproof wall panels are pretty much complete. I'm gonna let them cure. I'll kill the lights so no bugs dive bomb into the reflection, and then I'll be back tomorrow to lightly sand with 220 grit, and then I'm gonna apply an epoxy clear coat. After that clear coat cures, I'll be going on site and installing these. I'm gonna have to trim the sides of that back panel because these two are going in first. I'll drill where my handle and my tub spout goes, install those with 100% silicone, seal out the top with paint grade, that job will be done. Guys, we'll let this cure. I'll be back tomorrow for the next step. All right, it's the next morning. These are nice and cured. I'm gonna lightly sand with 220 grit. Just a hand sanding is all that's necessary. That's gonna create some tooth for my clear coat. The clear coat is gonna protect these colors and it's also gonna give this piece a little more depth. If this was gonna be a countertop, you definitely need to do that clear coat. That makes that surface food safe again. So does the ultimate top coat. If I was gonna apply the ultimate top coat, I would omit the clear coat. That's unnecessary because I'm protecting those colors with the ultimate top coat and making it food safe. Here we go, a light hand sanding. Don't blink, this is really quick. Okay, sanded, cleaned, it's time to mix. One to one ratio, we're going to the three. Let's do it.
I've evenly spread the material. Now it's time to take your chop brush and remove those trowel lines. I'll wet out this brush in my bucket and then you just randomly hit the whole surface. This is gonna eliminate trowel lines and mix the material a third and final time. I'll rub my edge another time here. Tomorrow after they're cured, I'll sand off the drips and then we're installing. I'll see you then for the next step. What's up folks? While I was making my tub surround panels, I decided to surprise the wife with these wall cap brand new custom Redwood River tables. I made them, they're mini. They're just like making a normal river table, but a lot smaller and they look a lot better than those beat up nasty ones that I tore out of here. So I ran to the slab yard. There's a bunch of slab yards where I live. I live in Southern Oregon. Grabbed a nice slab of redwood and I made sure I had enough material to do my windowsill and my two wall caps. I traced them out over my wood and then I cut those out using a circular saw. I made sure my slab was large enough for both wall caps and my windowsill and I needed some trim boards as well. This part of the project was my favorite part. I traced them out over my slab, cut them out, and then I used my slab jig and planer to get them to the thickness I wanted and to clean up and make my trim boards. I built two forms for my little river tables, filled them up with blue earth metallic supercast, let that cure. The blue earth is exactly what I use on my tub panels so they match really good. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see a full length tutorial on how I made these wall caps and windowsill. It's a lot like making river tables, Pretty much the same steps with a different finish. Let me know in the comments below. I really love the redwood and blue earth with the wall panels. It looks super sweet. Now back to the video. My epoxy clear coat cured perfectly. It's time to eliminate the drips. Panels are gonna go right over my existing cultured marble, but I'm gonna waterproof this 100%. The foam is already water and mold resistant. I'm gonna take that to the next level with our Ardex waterproofing membrane. Just roll or brush that on. Thin layer is all that's necessary. We'll let that dry tomorrow. We're gonna go on site and install. All right, these are waterproofed on the back. I'm gonna let this dry tomorrow. It's time to install. Time to install, guys. This install is gonna be pretty fast, quicker than normal. No need to tear out this waterproof cultured marble surround that I already have. It's gonna stay nice and waterproof, protect the sheetrock. My tub panels are gonna glue right to here. I have a drop edge on those tub panels to hide that we're not demoing this. It's gonna be sweet. All right, I'm gonna rip off these wall caps. We built a couple new wall caps. I'll demo that windowsill. Here we go, time to demo.
58. Holes are laid out, we're heading back to the shop. I'm gonna use a router bit to quickly take care of that. Let's do this. 13 and a half. I'll see you there. The reason I didn't cut it out too before, and then I have to tape this and then everything would want to run if you had a leak and that's visible, you could tell that. So best case scenario is cut it after you pour. That's what I like to do with top mount sinks as well, where else you have a chance for the epoxy to run and escape and that's gonna be vis visually noticeable. No big deal though. That cut like butter. So that's the way to go. A router bit, straight cut router bit to cut your shower panels. The moment of truth. That's gonna work. Fifty-five and seven eighths. Cool. Same measurements. Wonderful. That makes it easier. 55 and 7 eighths is all we gotta do. We'll go rip that on the table saw. That's a clean cut, man. Sweet. Waterproof shower panels with foam and epoxy. Possibilities are endless. Let's do this. Scent silicone is what I use, especially around anything wet, man. This stuff is the way to go. Where you don't want to use silicone is on top. Where you're gonna paint, that's when we use latex. It's paint grade. Whenever you change the colors of your walls, you can change the color of that caulking. That looks clean. nice and tight so that's great there's no voids there making those quarter size blobs that are 3d you know about that far off the wall when you push in it just suctions anything to that surface so all right buddy let's let that set up I'll go get some shims and uh, we'll come do these wall caps I'll caulk this out with paint grade oh I could put the faucet back on all right, I'm gonna level out my wall caps and then I'm gonna caulk out the tub surround, let that dry. We'll be taking baths tonight. <laughs> cool. Had a bandsaw here for, you know, the last four years and that's the first time I've used it. Investment. That's an ROI. <laughs> Sweet. So, man, the uh, 
faucet, I got that back on. Everything was good. All I had to do is get about a half of an inch longer mechanical screw. So I just took that screw into a hardware store. It was a 1024. If you know what that means, let me know in the comments below. I bet you don't. I didn't know I learned yesterday, but I took that in, grew it, and it worked good. It snugged everything nice. I was just a hair short. So knowing that in my next tub surround, I could have got away with going half inch on my foam versus an inch, especially when doing this drop edge method because I'm leaving that uh, tub surround as a waterproof backing, but that's gonna add a little depth. You gotta make sure you have enough depth for your, for your handle and everything to still continue to work when you add that extra layer of foam and epoxy. Depending on your tub hardware, they do make extension kits for that, but the day and age we live in with the supply chain nightmares, it's best to err on the side of caution. Next time I would go half inch foam versus one inch foam, especially on little, little panels like this. That's not a problem. Once they're glued, these things are solid. All right, I'm gonna grab my silicone. Check your work. We're good. Same deal here. Updating the look of your bathroom can be done on a budget using stone coat epoxy. I hope you learned some tips and tricks to give you confidence to try this project out yourself. When you do it yourself, you're gonna save thousands versus going to the big box stores and waiting for a contractor to come install your project. Do it yourself, save time and money with stone coat epoxy. And until next time, from all of us here at Stone Coat Countertops, you got this and we'll see you on the next video.